Hey, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. I'm Robbie. I'm Mike. And I'm John. And you are tuned into Buzzine. Well, we built our own recording studio in Buffalo, and, and that was a lot of fun. We wasted so much time there because we were just, you know, kids in a candy store. You know, if we, we could do anything we wanted, and if we blew it up, it didn't matter because it was ours. Which we did. Which we did. We wound up working with four producers in five different recording studios in two different cities, so it was like, yeah. or three different cities, actually, excuse me, because we worked in Nashville on, on some stuff as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else happened during this record? We we were in Paramount Studios uh, the day Michael Jackson died and he had recorded a whole bunch of the early Jackson 5 stuff in that room that we were in and I just remember it being kind of creepy yeah kind of creepy you know <laughs> I think we're all happier with the way this record sounds if nothing else because I think it sounds more like like we actually do uh, a lot of bands uh, especially these days, more than any other, it seems, just tend to put out records that don't really sound like they sound as a band when, when you see them live. I think this one is more of a representation of that. And I think we took a lot of, a lot of chances, you know, and we were definitely more in control of uh, shaping the kind of the sonic landscape of what was going on on the album, just because we've been doing it for so long, you know. I think the world is four years older and four years wiser now, just the planet. And so hopefully the places that we went on this record, you know, were, were representative of those things. Come take me home. Oh, I need you now. And never... The most valuable asset truly that you have are the people that are willing to put their lives on the line, you know, and, and that's very important. I don't think that that's something that should be taken lightly by, uh, by the government or by a bunch of lobbyists that, um, you know, want to profit right. from war. These are people's lives, man, you know. And they have dreams and families and children and goals and aspirations. You know, and I think the way that people look at soldiers now, you know, people who aren't necessarily supportive of the war in general. I think it's a lot different now. I think people are supportive of the soldiers and of the troops now. I don't think that it was that way many years ago. I think that people understand a little bit more that the decisions the government makes is, aren't necessarily the same decisions. You know, it, it's not necessarily in the soldiers' heads. They're just there doing their job, mm -hmm. you know, bravely and, and, and selflessly. Personally, me, I'm against an all-volunteer army. I, I never thought I would say that, but I'm against an all-volunteer all army because I truly believe that if, when you turn 18, man, woman, uh, rich or poor, you know, when, when the congressmen, the senators, children have to start going and fighting in the wars, that that will have a direct impact on American foreign policy. I mean, they might vote a little differently yeah. then. I just hope that people can relate to this and know that they're not alone, that somebody is thinking about them, and that we kind of have to stick together and come up with a better way of doing things. Met a woman who, whose husband was injured in Iraq and was telling me about it and how he, was, he didn't want to come home and, because he, he was permanently changed. He, just felt as though he didn't belong any, anymore. She really loved him and, and was trying to reach out to him and, and I was kind of moved by that story so I, I kind of decided, well, you know, I'll, I'll write him a love letter from her and uh, maybe he'll get to, maybe he'll understand it and then, and then uh, stop acting like a fool. My defense is gone. Come take me home. We're gonna be out touring uh, for the rest of the year and, and we're um, doing smaller cities in America now again which is always fun you know because a lot of bands don't do that you know we, we get to dig in deep Ashtabula. yeah and then uh, we're going over to the UK which is always a lot of fun and, uh, and then we're gonna come home for Christmas obviously and then and then I think we're gonna tour Canada in January go figure you know we have about 90 shows under our belt already actually you know before we actually started the actual proper support, you know, the touring support of the record. So, uh, so we're pretty well rehearsed. We're pretty good right now. You should come out and see it.
take me